Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use classes in Node.js. And to do so, we're going to refactor a server.js file. So right now I have a very simple app which is loading up on localhost 8000 and it's just displaying something really simple, but we're also using MongoDB. So what I would advise for you to do is to clone or download this Node.js examples GitHub repo and go into servers and just download this package.json and the server underscore old into your own folder and then type npm install. So this is what the folder structure currently looks like. And again, either copy this as it is right now or go into the repo and download this file. And we're just going to be refactoring this code into classes. And then also make sure that you have a terminal open and running MongoDB. So this is Mongoose Connect. So we're using Mongoose to connect to a local instance of MongoDB. And then you just want to open up a new terminal window and type MongoD and then it'll start up the MongoDB server or database. So at this point I've navigated into my servers folder and I've typed nodemon server old and that is what started our application on 8000. So I'm going to refactor this. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these vars with consts. And, you know, this isn't totally necessary, but this is just a new thing in ES6 that we have the option of doing. So we'll replace the vars with const. Really the main difference between var and const is the concept of hoisting. When using var, everything gets hoisted to the top, and it's not the case with const. And the next thing that I want to do to make this ES6 is get rid of these functions. What we can do is we can just get rid of this function here, and then I can say equals and then arrow. So this will work as it is. We can either leave these curly brackets in or we can delete them. So let's say I deleted them like that. This is going to throw an error though because we're ending with the semicolon right here. So in order for this to work we just need to get rid of that semicolon. Okay and then we'll do the same thing for app.listen which runs our server. Just get rid of this function. So now we've slightly refactored this. We've just added in our const and our arrow functions. And it looks like our nodemon server has restarted since I saved the file and we don't get any errors. So that's good. Now let's go ahead and refactor this into classes. And basically you don't really need to do this. This is just something that you have the option of doing. It's like syntactic sugar. So in node version 4, I believe, and above, we get the ES6 introduction of classes. So one reason you might want to refactor your node apps into classes is because when using Angular 2, which also uses classes, everything is synchronized, right? So you're just using classes throughout the application. Otherwise, I honestly think it's a little bit more code and not really worth it, but it's, um, you know, another option for you. So all we need to do is I'll start off by saying class server. We need to wrap it in curlies. And then we'll be using the constructor. So this is kind of like the revealing module pattern where you're returning everything at the end of the file except we're using it inside of the constructor. So the constructor is going to init various methods that are going to be defined within this class. So I'm actually going to define five methods and each one of these methods is going to contain some of this code down below. So first I'll say this dot init db then I'll say this dot init view engine. Then we'll say this dot init express middleware. Then I'll say this dot init routes. And finally I'll say this dot start. So then what we're going to do is we're going to define each one of these methods. Now the way that we declare this in the constructor does matter because we want to go one after the other. How are these methods that we define below? The order doesn't matter. So start is the last thing in the constructor method, but we'll just put it at top because it doesn't matter where we put it. So we'll just cut and then paste that in. Next up is our view init engine. And I'm going to copy over these four lines of code right here. So I'll just cut that, paste that in. Next we'll have our init express middleware. And this is just going to hold our body parser stuff. 
Next, we'll have our init routes. And this is just going to hold our app.get. And then finally, we'll have our init DB, which is going to contain our mongoose connect. So if you're not that familiar with Angular, this might look a little weird how we're defining these methods, but this is the new ES6 way that we can declare methods, which is just with these parentheses invoking and then within the curly braces is where we define our logic. And inside the constructor, we're using this dot in order to reference each one of these methods, which is a pattern you'll find used very frequently within Angular 2. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to invoke our class server. So this is just like the constructor function syntax when we new up a constructor function. It's going to be the same thing. So then we can just say new, new server uh, just like that. So then I'll save that go over to my terminal and since I saved the file it restarted the server and we don't get any error messages so everything worked. I can go back into my localhost 8000 and see that my application is running just fine. And instead of putting everything in this same folder like I did you might want to make a server 3 and then just run that so that you still have the original file. So I hope that you learned something using classes in Node.js. And again, it's just syntactic sugar. You don't have to use this, but this is a pattern that you might like. You might like how it's written and you might want to start using it or incorporating it in your own Node.js applications.